linebacker and our offensive lineman for Haverhill, one of the Eagle Tribune football show's players of the week. Phil, doesn't seem like it's any coincidence that panic is at the beginning of your name. A lot of enemy ball carriers and a lot of quarterbacks panic when they see you. The great Austin Burton from Newton South certainly did. You guys totally dominated in a big 42-12 to playoff win uh, last week. Take us through that big playoff win. Uh, you know, we just we knew we had to be more physical than up front, and that's exactly what we did. You know, we had a, we had a real good week of practice, and uh, it just it, uh, it all came together on a, on a Saturday night. What was the game plan? The, the Burton kid, uh, Austin Burton, his grandfather played in the pros. His father, Steve Burton, the whole family, Division One athletes. Looks like he could be the next in line. He might be the best sophomore in the state. He'd thrown 20 TDs. You guys totally dominated, only one TD pass, three TD interceptions. How'd you, do, how'd you pull that off? Uh, you know, we, we knew he was a good, he's a talented kid, but uh, we just, you know, we uh, thought we could rattle him. I mean, at the end of the day, he's a sophomore. I mean, that's it's hard for anyone to come in at the sophomore level and, uh, and produce consistently. So he's done a great job of that this year, but we were able to, you know, rattle him up front a little bit, get, put some pressure on him constantly all day. And our uh, secondary was just breaking on the ball great. And uh, it seems like whenever anybody talks about Haverhill, the, the defense comes up early and they always say, Panici in the hits. Panici in the hits. What is it with you in these uh, bone-crushing hits? I, uh, you know, I don't know. It's just uh, I love I love the physicality of the game. You know, I I try to dedicate myself the best I can in the weight room, just kind of trying to outpower kids. I mean, I'm not the not the biggest or fastest kid, but uh, so if I if I can get a body on you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure you uh, you knew what happened. What's what's the b biggest hit of, of your high school career? The one that sticks out that uh, wow. That was uh, my Ronnie Lott moment. Uh. Oh, well, uh, freshman year, actually, before I was on varsity, actually, I, I de-helmeted a kid down in Tewksbury. <laughs> I mean, we lost 24 nothing, so it was kind of lost in the uh, in the game there. But that, I always kind of think about that. It was, it was pretty cool, because you see that like in, in pros and colors, like knocking helmets off, so it's, it was pretty cool to actually do it. How important is it to bring that uh, physical nature to uh, Reading, one of the elite programs uh, in the state? You'll be squaring off with, with them in the uh, in the uh, North semis, what, what are your thoughts on uh, Reading? Oh, it's huge. You know, they they run they run the ball a lot. Power football team, so we just got to be uh, more physical than up front. And you know, uh, I think if uh, if if we own the line of scrimmage, and at the end of the day, I think we'll come out come out on top, just like any other game. You always hear uh, Haverhill's a football town. What's it like to to be on top uh, while playing with the Hillies? Oh, it's awesome. You know, back when I was in eighth grade, you know, we had the uh, you know 0 and 32 streak going. So to come in. Uh, our, with our class and kind of bring us back up, but it's it's huge. It's awesome. Sometimes uh, Phil, it, it's just one really good class, and obviously they had uh, Burrows and they had Chance Brady and some terrific, terrific greats there. How have you guys managed to, to keep the tradition going and make sure it wasn't just one or two good classes? Uh, you know, we kind of just bought into the off-season stuff. You know, Coach does a great job with uh, you know giving us, give us, getting us in a uh, off-season weight training program, and you know we all bought in like from the start and just dedicate ourselves in the weight room. And that's that's the first step, you know, off season weight training and just buying in, watching film, you know, just coming coming to work every day. A lot of Hillies in the recent past start on the gridiron, really did a, a nice job for themselves in the classroom. Chance Brady at Tufts, one of the top schools in the country. Coach was saying a lot of great stuff about you uh, in the classroom. How, how are the academics going for you? Uh, pretty good, yeah, I have like a 3.7 GPA, I, I think so, so. And uh, are you looking at any uh, college programs? Oh uh, yeah, I'm looking at a little bit, kind of from some NESCOC schools, you know, a couple of Liberty League schools, so I'm uh, um, I, but that's not my top priority right now. But uh, yeah, I'm definitely in contact with some coaches. If I see you play lacrosse, would, would I be seeing the same decleating uh, hits? Or are you uh, you a finesse guy in lacrosse? <laughs> no, 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 sir. I'll definitely be uh, laying hits there. Uh, uh, unfortunately, with lacrosse, I'm in the penalty box a little bit more. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I definitely like to lay the wood there too. No need to panic, Redding. This guy's ready. You might need to panic. Watch out, Redding Rockets. Phil Panici, he's coming to get you. With Eagle Tribune Thursday Football Show Player of the Week, Connor Donovan. Connor, geez, coming off sort of a, a crazy week. Uh, Lowell, uh, just a few weeks ago, was the fourth-ranked team in the entire uh, state, ahead of uh, Vaunted Central Catholic even. You folks were coming off a 49-0 loss. So, of course, you guys should have got pummeled. You shocked them 28-7. to How do you explain that, Connor? I mean, we just played together as a team. We always had the talent to 
like win games and everything. We just never put it together and never executed. And at that game, everybody did well. It was just a team effort. How do you keep your confidence up? It, it, it's e easy, I would imagine, to sort of pack it in when, when things aren't, aren't going well and, and you guys coming off a bye week and a, and a tough loss. How, how do you guys uh, stay so tough? Well, uh, Coach Ryan was really good at keeping our confidence. And nobody wanted to go down as going 1-10, in 10, especially in Methuen. We're a good football town. We've had past like Super Bowl champions and undefeated seasons. So nobody wanted to be the 1-10 in 10 team. You know what I mean? You and a uh, new quarterback, uh, Kendrick Deneau, certainly made sure that uh, didn't happen. Kendrick had a, an awesome game. Everyone's uh, buzzing about. And you had seven catches, 100 yards, two TDs, a, a conversion. How were you able to put up such uh, eye-popping numbers? Well, I just did the easy part. The line had a blocked court. Kendrick had to throw the ball. I just had to catch it. I did the easy part. And uh, coming off some injuries, take us through what's the season been like for, for you, Connor? Well, I broke the first play, I broke my collarbone in half. And I tried to play through it, and I got to the half where my arm was just dangling, and uh, the trainer over there, Mr. Delano, took me out, and that was that. I didn't play another snap until a little. And uh, are you still playing in, in some pain? That doesn't seem like a minor injury. No, it's it's, uh, it's sore when I like move it around because I haven't moved it in a long time, but it pain, no, there's no pain. Describe uh, Kendrick as a ball player. I hadn't heard much about him, and he uh, people around the state are talking about the performance from you, too. He's a great athlete. I run track with him. Extremely fast, great athlete, He's really smart. He knows the game of football, so that helps going into that. You're a little bit under the radar, I think, Connor, but geez, uh, doing a, a little research. You're number seven all time in the 400 hurdles, and then uh, overcoming this injury with one of the uh, top receiving efforts in our area this entire uh, fall. Uh, how, do, how does the track uh, speed help out on the gridiron? Oh, it helps out a lot. Last year, when we started the season, I was running like a 5 1 or something, and I did two seasons at track. It got me to a 4 6. Helps me get over the top of the defense and I, my routes were always like decent, but with my cuts and everything, everything was faster. Now, what's it, were these the first two uh, touchdowns of your varsity career? They were. Yes, was, they were. Was it like uh, Big Connor to get oh, into that end zone? It was great. It was great, especially coming off the injury and everything. I was like worrying about like is my I'm gonna break something else or everything. And when I got that first touchdown, it was a huge sigh of relief. Now, uh, are you from a football family, uh, Connor? I am. My dad is was on the 1984 undefeated team here. Then went to the Super Bowl and he played with Clemens. My uncle won the Super Bowl here. Like Who's your uncle? Uh, Daniel, Daniel Donovan. Okay, yep. He was on the 92 team. Like everyone played football. My uncle played football over at the Volk, I think. And what's his name? Uh, Christopher. Uh, Donovan. Donovan. Okay, yeah. good. So good football family. And yeah. uh, t tell us about the the Tyler Tough uh, movement. A, a lot of people uh, are saying there's a uh, the, the memory of uh, Tyler Weymouth, AD Jim Weymouth's uh, son, who died tragically uh, a few months back, has been inspiring to Methuen and Methuen High athletes. What can you tell us about oh, yeah. the Tyler Tough movement? He, I think he was given like two weeks to live at the first prognosis, and to show that he could fight for months at a time with that horrific. In, uh, disease and he kept going like it showed that if he can do that with like a life-threatening disease we can tough it out on the football field and Mr. Weymouth played a huge part in all, all the sports he goes to every every sporting event he can he's always there so we try to we just show that we try to do something back show him that we care well, that's the Methuen football rangers they're Tyler Tough and they're Methuen Tough congratulations Connor thank you and welcome back to the Eagle Tribune High School Football Show. It is cold out now. We are officially into the playoffs. We're a week into the playoffs, but now we're really getting into the nitty-gritty. Like, and We're going to start right off with the game that everybody is talking about. It's the obvious place to start. It is the game of the season in the whole state, maybe. We got Central Catholic going to St. John's Prep, the only team that's beaten them in the last two years, the only team that's been able to beat Central Catholic in the last two years, and they've done it twice in St. John's Prep. This is going to be a very interesting matchup. Yeah, they're, they're, St. John's is going to be uh, 
you know, loaded for bear. They still talk about Johnny Thomas's uh, injury last year and how they would have been state champs and all that stuff. But that's football. You need depth, and sometimes great players get injured. Number three, uh, St. John's in the uh, ESPN statewide poll, ESPN Boston, and the Central number four. Wondering, is Central playing quite as well as it was mid-year and early in the year? Chelmsford, are a real good club. Miracle, Michael uh, Milano, the comeback, crazy finish. Central pulls it out. Beat Andover, you know, had a little bit of breathing room, but it was a tight game. Very interesting. Andover, good club, real good club maybe, but you know, it's not quite uh, St. John's. I'm wondering if they're quite what they were playing uh, the level of, of interesting previous. Point. The Chelmsford, the Chelmsford uh, win almost lost was not a good game. No question about it. I mean, the fact that they came back and won is good. It was not a good performance. Andover was okay, not great. We didn't get to see, you know, what would have happened if Kevin Chen had been in the whole game. Uh, that's an interesting question. I don't know if I know the answer to it. But I will say that I was at Central Practice, and they are a confident group. This is not a group that's looking at St. John's Prep and trembling. You know, I talked to Marcus Edmonds, who's a confident dude to begin with. He was confident. I talked to George Elias, Jorge Elias. He was confident. Mike Milano's confident. This is a group that's not afraid. Whether they're playing great, and they're playing good, and whether they're playing great or not, they're not afraid of St. John's Prep. And a lot of times that can be a big plus. Yeah, I mean, well, you, you win at Everett, and you win at Gillette against Avarian. Not too much to fear. It doesn't, you know, unless you're going to play the Patriots, I don't know who else uh, you're going to. We all know what the key to this game is, and it's turnover. That's what lost it for St. John's, uh, rather for Central last last time around against St. John's Prep. Uh, last year it was because of Johnny Thomas. Uh, they can't turn it over five times, what, five straight times? Yeah, all in the second half, yeah. Really, what are the odds that's going to happen again? Not good. It could, but it's not good. Yeah, I'd say about one in 30 million. Yeah, so that's that's definitely going in Central's favor. And even though they lost to, to um, Oliver Ebreth, last time around. It's not like they haven't beaten Oliver Ebreth before. They did beat him twice last year. Has he come a long way? Sure. But, he, I mean, he's still the same player, basically. Mm -hmm. So, I'm almost tempted to pick Central in this. I'm almost... It's right there. I got a bad feeling, though. I think I'm going to have to go with St. John's Prep. Yeah, I, I think uh, St. John's as well. Just as I alluded to, I don't think Central's quite quite playing where it was. I think if they really had their A game, when they were really clicking, that they could certainly knock them off. And if they do hit their A game, they do click, wouldn't surprise me, me in the least. But I just think maybe the prep's playing a little bit better. Rocket, uh, they have some terrific speed with, with the Rocket kid, and it, maybe just a, a little bit more in the quickness department that uh, maybe Central will have a, a little bit of a, a tough time matching up with. This is the kid of the actual name Rocket, not Johnny Rocket, Johnny Football, Johnny Thomas. So we're going to have both go with the prep in this one. Okay, and we go on. We backtrack to Friday here, staying with the playoff. We got Haverhill at 6-2, and two, going to Reading, also 6-2. and two. Uh, A tough matchup for Haverhill, certainly. You know, this is a team that's been sort of helter-skelter. They've looked great. And they've looked really bad in a few games. Reading, a solid team. They, they haven't had a lot of huge wins. They've been very consistent. Their biggest wins were against BC High, which was only 10 to 3, and Masco, which is 27 to 20. This is not a game that Haverhill's totally outmatched. In. No, no, it, I, I think it might be a coin flip. I mean, Reading was real good last year. But of course, they drew Belcher, the scholarship kid, uh, now playing at, at UMaine. It seems like over the years. Kid go to Harvard. They've had a lot of really terrific uh, quarterbacks. Don't know if they quite have that uh, kid uh, this season. One thing that, that makes them tough, John Fiore, 11 years, 90 wins. Not so many coaches in the state can say that. So you know he's got a, he's a good coach w with a good program. That makes me lean ever so slightly toward uh, toward the Rockets. They both have the same record, but uh, maybe just with uh, that Fiore record makes me think, yeah, there must be a reason he's won 90 games in uh 11 years. I say the uh, the tough guy offense takes control. I think Havel's going to take this one. I think they're going to control the clock, control the ball, and get the win. In advance, it, two, playing the winner of the next game, I'm going to point out, it's Lincoln Sudbury going to North Andover. North Andover is quietly maybe the hottest team in the state right now, by the way. 
three straight shutouts. They've outscored everyone in that stretch by 109 to nothing. And they're playing like a Sudbury team, which is pretty good at 6-2, and two, but I think North Andover's the favorite. Yeah, I mean, it's two pretty evenly matched teams. You know, if one club really, if, if the opposition really looked, well, they're just better than North Andover, then maybe you'd have to go with them. But evenly matched uh, game, and you, you got a club with three straight shutouts, hard to bet against them. Love their linemen, big, talented, physical, you know, outside of maybe the Catholic Conference. I don't know if there's too many lines in, in the state that can really uh, match up to Yanni Falaris and co. Bubba comes up big, too. North Andover wins this one. Haverhill and them get a rematch, in my opinion. All right, now we're going to go back to Saturday, sticking with the playoffs. We're going to go into Hampshire. We're going to look at the Mac Plaque take two. Londonderry's back in the playoffs, and they are taking on Pinkerton, which has been far and away infinitely the best team in New Hampshire this season. Uh, Pinkerton, quick look. They're allowing 9.2 points a game. And, of course, they won the previous matchup. Uh, I can't read my handwriting, so I can't tell the stories. <laughs> but they won the previous matchup against Londonderry, and I think Pinkerton's going to keep going. Yeah. Only thing that, that you wonder in that, their only game this year was the, was the early season Salem game. We went down to the wire, uh, one TD game. They could have gone either way. Every other game, 20 points or more. I almost wonder, maybe your world beaters, no one can stay with you. You kill them just because you're a thousand times better. We see that in mass with Everett. We've seen that a lot with uh, some Pinkerton teams over the years. Just wondering if that is that team, or if maybe this could be the week where it comes bite you in the butt a little bit. You know, the, the Patriots 18 and 0 thing. All of a sudden, maybe they're not a thousand times better. Odds catch up to it a little bit. Odds and Eric Fairweather. You got a, a charmed Londonderry team who had uh, obviously had the uh, the horseshoe. Uh, you know where the horseshoe must have been for them to uh, to pull it off last week in the, the the crazy win over Salem, which people in Salem are still ripping their hair out over. I think I'm going with Pinkerton, but that, that's something to, uh, to uh, ponder if it's been a little too easy for Pinkerton. And if you're not just totally dominant and it's been that easy, sometimes that catches up to you. If anyone's going to do it, it's going to be fair weather. 21 points to the Londonderry scored is the most Pinkerton's allowed this year. Uh, it's also interesting to note that uh, T.J. Urbanek rushed for 201 yards against Londonderry the last time around. So I'm gonna go with I'm I'm gonna go with Astros too. I'm not quite as sold on Londonderry as you are. We shall see. Okay, a mass playoff game. We got a Thanksgiving rivalry matchup. We got Greater Lawrence coming to Whittier, and there's one staff that dominates this. Forty-two to sixteen, which was the final score of the last time they played. It was only a few weeks ago. I think that could mean bad news for Greater Lawrence. Yeah, I, could, I think they're playing a lot better football. Uh, yeah. the, the Torres kid is is really uh, caught fire, and he might be the hottest running back uh, we have in the area. Just wonder, that, that Whittier defense, uh, offense has been a little up and down. They, they sort of win with some ground control and some precision. Uh, Connor Bradley passing when, when they need it. Or Graham Storff will make the play when they need it. Defense has been there week in and week out, one of the stingier defenses in the area. I don't think they've given up more than 21 points in a game. Uh, this year, so you, you know, get the playoffs. The, the old cliche defense wins championships. So I'll, I'll uh, put my money on the Whittier G. Yeah, I agree too. And uh, you know, Bradley's been playing better. Uh, Graham Storff, like you said, has had some big games. I, I think Whittier comes away with this one, and we get a really nasty matchup on Thanksgiving with those two. Okay, another playoff game, and this is a game that could be a humongous, humongous blowout. We got Wyndham, which hasn't been tested all season, hosting Milford. And, you know, I joked about the final score the previous time Greater Lawrence and Whittier played. You know what the final score the last time Wyndham and Milford played? Uh, something along the lines of 41 to nothing. 41 to nothing. That would be correct. Yes, that's very good. <laughs> and uh, so that's obviously a bad sign for, uh, for Milford, a good sign for Wyndham, which, again, has not been tested all season. You know, you mentioned uh, Pinkerton not being tested, and that can be bad. It's not going to be a problem for Wyndham. Yeah, I, I think this is the case. I, unlike Pinkerton where maybe Lundary's a, a, a club that can hang with them. It looks just like uh, Wyndham is uh, vastly superior to, to Milford. Maybe they play 100 times, and Wyndham might win 100 times. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to, to watch Wyndham in a game that's really competitive, but uh, we're going to have to wait for another week for that one. All right, and we're wrapping up the playoff slate, we've got Sanborn, 5-3, and three, hosting Hollis Brookline. Last time they played, very exciting game, 14-13 to 13 Sanborn win. Sanborn blocks a kick late. Uh, Sanborn's been playing like gangbusters lately. You know, Zach Matthews has been awesome. 
I think they continue this that stretch. Yeah, they they won three straight, so they they're the hot club. So uh, the last one proved it could go either way, but uh, home team three straight. Maybe stick with uh, stick with the Indians. I'm gonna have to go with the Indians too. All right, so let's go look, quickly look at the the non playoff games, the consolation round, if you will. Andover's at Chelmsford rematch of the, the game we were both at, where Andover won 49 to 37. Uh, always a good rivalry. I'm a little concerned about Andover because they don't have Kevin Chen, but that could also mean that EJ EJ Perry Four is going to uh, start throwing the ball around and uh, opening up some eyes, some more eyes. I think Andover comes in and takes this one. You know what? I, I'm going with Chelmsford. It was uh, Andover really. Uh Really was clicking offensively in that game, and, and Chen was absolutely on fire. He's averaging 148 yards a game. You lose him, it looks you know looks like a season-ending uh, knee injury versus uh, Central. I don't think you can just say the next man up uh, rushes for 148 yards and his typical two, three TDs a game. Probably a little bit too much to overcome and uh, go with the Lions and uh, Jack Camp Smith in this one. Very well could be. Uh, I'm still going to go with Andrew with that. All right, we got Lawrence. Going to Methuen. Methuen, which is coming off its huge win, beating Lowell. Uh, Lawrence coming off a not so good performance. Uh, I'm still tempted to go with Lawrence in this one. I still think that they, if assuming they're ready to go, which doesn't seem like they were last week, they still have too many weapons for Methuen to keep up with. I think I like Methuen. The, uh, the, the Connor Donovan, the, the, the more you hear about him, is he's just a legitimate baller. That, that if he was healthy this year and he, he missed almost the entire year, came back last week, seven catches. 100 yards, uh, two TDs, that he's probably an Eagle Tribune all-star wide receiver, maybe ranks up with anybody in the area. 6'2 kid with uh, seventh fastest 400 meter hurdle times in area history. Kendrick Deneau's arrives on the scene, new quarterback, and played a heck of a game. So I like that combination, and uh, I think that's enough to lift them over the Lancers. Let's say Lancers bounce back. Bounce back. Pentucket traveling to North Reading, a place that is historic, or in the last few years, not been very friendly to the Sachems. But the Sachems beat up on North Reading a couple weeks ago uh, in a game that North Reading, weirdly enough, showed up more than an hour late for. Uh, Sachems still playing pretty good ball. Hornets, not so much. Uh, I'm going to go with Pentucket. I'm going to say Pentucket. Yeah, it's uh, tough to figure out uh, North Reading. Uh, Arlington Catholic must be in one heck of a slump. North Reading has been sort of middle of the road this year, and they thumped uh, Arlington Catholic 54-6 to last week behind five Matt McCarthy TDs. I'm going to say it's one heck of a rebuilding year at AC and stick with uh, Pentucket. Yeah, I was there two weeks ago. Uh, okay, and now we got a couple prep games. we got Brooks at 6-1 and one going to Lawrence Academy, also 6-1. and one. Brooks has been tremendous this season, but so has Lawrence Academy. What do you think, Mike? I'm a big fan of superstars win big games. Lawrence Academy has got uh, Chris Garrison, the BC uh, tight end recruit, 6'4", 215 pound kids with uh, size and speed, tough combination. We'll say he's the uh, the tiebreaker, Chris Garrison. Brooks has a couple of uh, superstars in their own right, but I think you're probably right. I'll go with Lawrence. Lawrence Academy there. And we've got the matchup that everybody loves, Phillips Exeter coming to Phillips Andover. Tough, a little bit of a tough year for uh, for Andover. Uh, I forgot to look up Exeter. So, Mike, I'm going to let you take this one. Well, it's funny. Dave Dyer broke it down in uh, in today's paper. Both teams are two and five, and both the uh, wins over, over the same club. So, uh, tough to uh, tough to differentiate. I am going to say Matt Italio comes back and does his famed Kamada Haka dance. I'm sure I nailed the pronunciation on that. Had to be right on the money. And we're going to say Italio and the Haka dance lift the big blue over the big red. Griffins go down and go down hard. Griffins? I think they're the Griffins. G-I-Y-P-H-O-N-S. I could be wrong, though. Well, I don't even know what to make of that. But I'm going to take your word for it, but I'm going to go with Andover just, just to make things interesting. Wait, I went with Andover, went with Andover. See, you confused me that much. All right, then I'm with you. And uh, closing out the uh, closing out the week, we got Georgetown obviously coming off a very tough week, going to Greater Lowell. Uh, I'm going to say that everything that's happened surrounding Gre uh, Georgetown is just too much, and I'm going to say Lowell wins this one. Yeah, but both clubs having uh, nightmarish uh, seasons, and uh, Georgetown with the heartbreak of, of losing teammate Cam uh, Coy tragically uh, at such a young age uh, last week. 
got to be tough to deal with. Probably say uh, Greater Lowell will uh, take it. Okay, well, on a higher note, again, we got big playoff games. And they're Friday and they're Saturday, so you got plenty of time to hit up both. Enjoy the week. We'll be back with you uh, next week. Get out there and see some games. Thank <laughs> you.